Hi there guys and welcome to another Train Sim 2018 video. Today is something slightly special. Well, I say slightly special, it's actually really special. It's special to me as well. Let me just pause this game so I'm already running a little bit late. Um, this is the Atlantic coastline. So this is Newquay to Par. Part of the country that I absolutely love. Um, more than Newquay end of the Par end. I've never been to Par but I've definitely been to Newquay and around. And some of the little bits in between as well. Uh, there's actually a bit just out here that I really recognise and really do enjoy. This is made by a development team called High Speed Tracks. They're a small builder, a three person team. Uh, Simon who's a track lane expert. Uh, and then there's Callum, who does uh, is a, is a, a field and scenery builder. And Ash, who we know is the king of scripting for various assets and the usual botch together of all sorts of things, makes most things work. Um, these guys were also the people that developed uh, Devon Rails, which I can now do a video of as well, because I has, as much as I've had the route and been using it, uh, those of you that watch the streams of Sim use Devon Rails, uh, mostly by the push from either Ash or Albie. Um, I didn't have Riviera Lines in the 50s until the other day, so I've only just been able to really use it properly and see all the assets and stuff like that. Um, what can I say? I've driven this, and I did do this on the stream the other day, and I know how much I enjoy it, but I really hope you guys get the same as well. Uh, caveat, as always with these uh, first look videos, this route isn't available. I can't tell you when it's going to be available. What I can say is head on over to the High Speed Tracks Facebook group, give them a like, and then you'll be up to date with when this comes out. Okay? If you don't use Facebook, there is the UKRD website, which I think is linked. Well, I'll make sure it's linked in the description below. Uh, my guess is it will probably be published on there as well. But that is a guess. That is not me for saying that for certain. But Devon Rails is there, so I'm guessing this would be there as well. Um, there are some little tricky bits in this route. The gradients are tricky. Uh, the level crossings are there to catch you out. Uh, I'll go through them as we get through them. Please do remember this is a work in progress. It is very near to very nearly finished, as far as I can say, but uh, it still has bits and pieces. There's a bit, a couple of station platform stuff that needs doing, and um, a couple of little track jolts that need sorting out. But apart from that, this thing's awesome. Um, what does it require? Okay, so you will need the wary lines. You will need. Uh, Chaddock Engineering's Bridges, you'll need Creative Rails, China Clay Line, you'll need DTG Academy and North Somerset, you'll need Just Trains Bristol to Exeter, uh, Great Western Children, so it comes in there with their common library, you'll need uh, RSC's MP02 Town MPP Platform Clutter, uh, Riviera Lines and UK LED Signals, RSDL Foliage, which is also included in the Isle of Wight, uh, Two Cats Buildings and Scenery, which uh, it seems to come with it actually. Uh, UKTS, uh, freeware packs, ambient audio, blocks and lofts, clutter, commercial, housing, industrial, railway buildings, and the uh, JJS loot, level crossings. The, now, that sounds like a vast list, but most of that is available. All the things that you haven't heard of, I'm pretty sure are freeware, and you can get them. So, like the Chaddock Engineering Bridges, um, the Two Cats Building Scenery, which is included anyway, the JJS loot level crossings and the UKTS freeware packs so they're all freeware stuff anyway so in there what I can see that's payware and then, remember this is work in progress and subject to change is the wherry lines uh, China Clay line which is creative rail um, the DTG Academy in North Somerset so the Academy most of you will probably have I tend to not have it installed but I've, I've had it installed because quite a few routes have used bits from it recently um, also Just Trains Bristol to the Great Western Chilton common library uh, so you just actually need the bristol text uh, the great western and the common library comes with everything after newcastle edinburgh so um let's get going let's actually get going let me close that uh, text document down that i've been reading from otherwise it sort of blinds me out let me turn my light off here and then we can get into it because i'm excited to show you all it It's Cornwall, it's sunny, the windows are going open. Uh, the train's already been set up, I just needed to move it for um, the purpose of a screenshot. 
We are running late. I'm not too fussed about running late. Um, I will try and drive this as best of my to my ability. Uh, what I will say is that I'm more about showing you off the route more than sticking to speed limits and things like that. I will be sticking under the speed limits, but I might be slower going down the route than I would be, say, if I was in a proper service. Uh, the reason for that is for me showing you the route, really. And also, I'm still route learning. This is a route that I think you really need to learn. Uh, I've done one full return trip on this so far and I am still not an expert by any stretch of the imagination uh, GSMR stuff uh, 2 November 03 So leaving Nuki is is pretty undeniably Nuki, isn't it? <laughs> uh, one thing I will oh, let me show you this while we're here. I'm really, really impressed with this. Um, just because I was uh, showing off that new Nuki, I headed over down to the beach. <laughs> it's got parasols and everything. Now um, the version I've got, uh, they've been peeing about with the tides. Uh, so this won't look like this on release. But they've even used the network rail stuff to look like the RNLI bits. I think that is wonderful, even with the flags. Always swim beneath between the flags, guys. <laughs> it's just brilliant. It's just brilliant. And uh, Nuki Beach isn't one of my favourites. Uh, we'll just make that very clear. Um, even though it is the north end of Cornwall that I really do like. So, um, things you need to watch out for on this route. Number one is gradients. This thing has as many gradients as the West Highland Line. It is uh, a tricky beast. Second of all is level crossings. Again, a bit like the... Ooh, what is it? It's one of the West Highland Line routes, isn't it? It's the Kyle Line. I think that guy said the other night that used the same... Uh, I don't know what they're called they're like a different approach to level crossings so basically what it is is you have to sleep. you get a board with a, a white background with a black cross in it you then have to slow down to 10 miles an hour and wait for a flashing light to go off in front of you and then you can cross it and it just means the barriers are down it's very clever there's one literally the other side of uh, Quintral Downs so it's not far I think there's actually one before and one after if I remember rightly So, I mean, anybody that knows this part of the world will know what this looks like. Now, I know what Cornwall looks like in summer, winter. I go usually about two, three times a year, um, if not more some years. And this route, I can tell you now, has just nailed it. I've never actually done the route, and I should have done, and I never have done um, in real life. But just the atmosphere, so here's that, those uh, level crossing signs I was on about. So you get one of these. And you basically just have to make sure that you're watching your speed. Now if you keep an eye here. See I've got to be at 10 mile an hour by that board there. Well, then this side will be my light, won't it? Uh, and if you watch, I can hear the barriers going down. Hear that? 
and then bang, there's my flashing light. Now I will mess up at one of these uh, level crossings, I can guarantee you. You can see why you need to get those level crossings, the JJE, AS loot, or whatever they are. Because they're very nice. So comparison wise, <coughs> I mean, I said last night I didn't want to call them extreme railways, because that's just cheesing a bit over the top, but it is very similar to driving like the West Highland Line, just in sort of Cornish scenery instead of Scottish scenery. I mean, the attention to detail is just superb. Here's another one. Now, this is actually after the station, if I remember rightly. You see, this is sort of, you've got to be really on the ball with them. At first I thought they were going to annoy me, but they actually don't. They're just a really nice added part of it. And it's really teaching me how to drive the one. I mean, I was driving uh, one of the scenarios that came with it that I did uh, on the stream was a 150 slash 1. And I'll be honest, I drove that from Partanuki. I wasn't massively happy with it. It was a pain to drive. Uh, but the 150 uh, slash 2 is actually quite a pleasure to drive along here. It's got a little bit of the wary lines in it as well, you know what I mean? It's got that sort of feeling. Sort of a proper backwater branch. It's this crossing this after the station. See, just because of the gradients, you need to be on the brakes, but on the power, just knowing what you're sort of learning it, so you're not going to end up trolling along at five mile an hour, which I'm about to, by the way, <laughs> easily be caught out on this route. And just here at Quintal Downs, I mean, I couldn't count how many times I've crossed this level crossing, it's br just brilliant. Mm, 
not quite in the station there. Let's pull forward a little bit. Oh, roll back. See what I mean? So I'm not sure if it should be, I'm pretty sure it's the stop order would definitely have to stop out, wouldn't it? As much as the noises are annoying though, the gates and everything are lovely. I haven't driven this in any other season yet, I should really as well. Just to see what it's like. Quite that's irritating, I think I'd rather be up. next in, in just under four miles. Massively green, isn't it? Really sort of sucks you in. And I mean, Cornwall's one of those places, I mean, it's more... Um, evident further down the route, but you see it's still up here that I always find myself driving around in. And you're just going to look up at some point, or you'll just sort of see a gap in the trees at some point, and there will just be this railway line perched on the side of a cliff, or this really elegant viaduct going over that you just, if you hadn't lo really looked, you wouldn't have noticed. It's just got some wonderful little bits and pieces of railway architecture in it. And this route, I think, just captures it. like an almost see here's one of those level crossings that's going to catch me out gotta keep your eye on them pesky little things It's definitely a route to be driven from in the cab, but at the same time I want to show you 
some exterior shots to see it all. It's almost sort of some of these really picturesque lines are very reminiscent of like scenes out of like Thomas the Tank or like uh, sort of not so much cartoony but just this isn't cartoony in any way shape or form but the area itself looks kind of <laughs> like some sort of fantasy And I suppose that's why a lot of the model railways for the last 20 years have been Great Western Region and a lot of them have been Cornwall. China Clay Works. There's been loads of it. It's always a good sign in Cornwall, isn't it? Caravan Park. I used to stay in a lovely... My friend had a caravan in uh, Mother Ivy's Bay. Which is up in Travose Head on the north coast. Beautiful. And now I stay a lot of the time in Constantine Bay. Oh, I've got another friend who's got a lovely house there, so... I'll get that a few times a year. It actually works out. I mean, I'm not rich enough to be going down to Cornwall all the time, don't get me wrong, but it works out as a very, very cheap holiday for us. So that's why I tend to go down and do it. Apart from fuel, it doesn't cost us any more than staying at home. See, that's one of the track joints that needs looking at. Uh, Callum watched the stream last night, so he's well aware of what needs doing. He's um, written it all down the list for Simon, I think. I can't, this level cross is going to be before. fast into that. How many miles is it all the all together? So what, maybe maybe thirty miles of route length. So it's getting across Cornwall anyway is long anyway. Even driving, it's not brilliant.
Another little work in progress issue here is sometimes stopping points need to be pretty dead on. Which I know they are looking at as we speak. No, it's not going to let me stop here, but that is something that they are well aware of. So don't let that put you off, guys, or think of that as a mark against quality for this route. Because it's really not. Now, next station is Roche. We had a bit of a debate on the stream last night as to what people call this. Some people were calling it Rock. Some people were saying Roche. And other people were saying Roche. And other people were saying Roach. Um, Callum, who actually <coughs> was mentioned, he is from, from Cornwall. So I took his view on it. And I think we decided it was Roche. So I'll take that one. You might have a different pronunciation for it. Do let me know in the comments what you think, guys. It's always important to hear what you guys think about things like that. Because pronunciation, as you'll know, is not my strong point. Some of it's like roller coaster, it's brilliant. Well, I'll be honest, had this not been in Cornwall, do I think a route like this would have massively appealed to me? I'm not sure. I think I probably would have driven it a few times and then kind of gone, yeah, all right. It's nice, but no mainline stuff. But there's something just really... It's a bit like the Harrogate branch. It just captivates me. It just really draws you in. The way they've worked the scenery and done the route so well, it just draws you in. I actually did a, a lad muffin scenario after this on the Riviera lines when I streamed last night. And it was just a stark contrast. And the Riviera lines is one of the better routes by DTG anyway. But just to see how barren it looked compared is... is unreal. And that's not a DTG bashing. I know that they've got commercial pressures and everything on top of that. Yada, yada, yada. And I think Callum said last night that Devon Rails was two years work. A 
I mean, I was shocked to get this. I didn't even know this was work in progress, if I'm honest. And again, I'm truly thankful for them for uh, asking me to do these uh, pre-release videos for them. I've really enjoyed doing them. The DP Simulations one, the VP Productions one, this one. I've got another one that I think is uh, a route that will be published by uh, VP at some point. But I think it's actually them making it. busy and again just I'm going to say what I said in the last freeware video it's going to be an exciting year we're now in 2018 oh happy new year all actually it's been my first video of the new year wasn't it um this year's going to be banging for uh, DLC for Train Simulator 2018 and hopefully something a bit more decent from Train Sim World or at least some, some, some refining in Train Sim World And also driving this now, we're up this end with a torque converter kicked in over the 40 odd mile now, whatever it is. It's directly coupled the engine to the wheels, so watching your speeds was an interesting one. Just a nice challenge, really. And this cab does make me feel quite at home. I do apologise for hearing the microphone moving around a lot. I'm having to mute myself every couple of minutes to sneeze. Got a little bit of a... I think everybody's had it over Christmas, haven't they? This weird cold that's going around. Pretty. Just watch we don't slip on this gradient one sixty. So you see what I mean? Once you'd learnt this route, you could smash all these out well easy. You know when they were coming up. And it should be... 
easier to learn because of the amount of times you are going to have to do things like this. There's a lot of landmarks and stopping points. You'll know, oh, that's such and such crossing, that's such and such gate. And it's detailed enough that you will notice little bits. PTG, as soon as this comes out, you'll have a video of this in about three seconds, because <laughs> Peter will have this learn in, like, no time at all. But I suppose things like the gradients, and knowing the gradients and the level crossings and that, I think it's the gradients that are going to catch you out. They catch me out all the time. You'll cut the power and start rolling into somewhere thinking, and then you go, oh crap, I'm doing 10 miles over the speed limit. So like here we go down again, but now we're going straight back up again. Now I was going to rather be doing this with power than brakes. See, on a 1 in 60 going down, I mean, that's some power it's going to take to get that to stop, isn't it? And what's even weird is HSTs use this route as well. I think it's probably summer only. It might not be, actually. The detail in the fields is always good in this route. I've just uh, just driving along and noticing little bits and pieces just peek out at you. I think I said that about the Harrogate route as well. It's one of those things that's really plain, really simple, but is actually a huge part of railway scenery. That I just don't think enough attention has been given to. Doesn't even particularly have to have like a million and one assets or anything, it just has to look about right, doesn't it?
see what I mean? It's very quick to go over the speed limit. That was me literally looking at my phone for two seconds. another one of those routes that makes really good use of just basic trackside detailed assets. signs like the speed signs are really nice. I don't even know where they're from, they're very pretty though. Garden snooping. Oh, we, oh no, we could add a trampoline, but I am really liking sort of the new build environment of this, like a new estate being built. That's awesome. No, that's cool. That's very cool. An under construction new build. Estate I like that a lot. I was going to moan because there was nothing in the gardens. But I see why now. a fleshy light one. Oops. All right, sheep. I 
Right, I've actually got to stop at Goon Barrow Junction and get the token. Which is another little feature of this I really like as well. aware of the speed limit not showing up there. Right, there's the Bobby, he's got the single line token. Grab that from him. Cheers, mate. So the next now this is a, a an interesting an interesting little bit of uh, railway history happened here. It was an HST. What I'm trying to find is the actual report. Speed all the way through there, sped all the way through there as I um, was trying to find this page about this. So, Saturday, the 25th of May 1991, uh, HST power car number 43035, heading the 1130 Newquay to Paddington, derailed shortly after exiting the Luxonian Tunnel. This left it perched. Perilously over the edge of a high embankment deep in the Luxonian Valley. <coughs> Rather than attempt to detrain the passengers and all their luggage in this almost inaccessible location, they were all moved through the power car of 43029 after uncoupling it, returning at walking pace through the tunnel to Luxonian Station where the passengers alighted and were taken to par and a fleet of cars. So, <laughs> I mean. The idea of this, it tickles me. It tickles me. So what they basically did is instead of detraining people, they put them in what used to be the guards' compartment on the power cars. So it's like the luggage space these days. You put a bike in there or whatever. So the little doors at the back of HST power cars. And it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, on this luxsoft.demon.co.uk, there's uh, a great little bit of history, just lots of pictures of it actually happening. And they say a fleet of cars, the Peugeots were popular in Cornwall at that time by the looks of it. It's like Renault 19s, what's that? Uh, Let's have four. Can't remember what that was. Unless it's a Fran there as well, I think.
I mean, the station in this looks uh, luxurious compared to what they have in the picture here. It's literally just like a, a, a bus shelter on a very grassy platform. I'm glad I found that because this is the one. There's a bit at the bottom here which I didn't realise. This is this is new to me as well. Uh, power car 43029 has a somewhat checkered history since 1991. In mid 2001, it featured in the press launch of First Great Westerns, new blue, white, and pink livery. So that been Barbie livery. On the 6th of November 2004, it was again the rear power car in a derailment. It was the. Let me just get this going. The um, uh, after Nerve in Berkshire, um, Berkshire, and the guy put his car on the line, wasn't it? The level crossing. And if you go onto YouTube, <laughs> if you go onto YouTube, where are you going to be now? Uh, and if you put in. Uh, re-railing derailed in City 125. You will find the video of them re-railing the 125 actually at the Luxon Valley. With a braff if I remember rightly. A Bedford braff. So it's going down to uh, some blazy for the token. You'll see this is some climb, this. I just, should just say some gradient, shouldn't I? And if I release the brakes, you'll see just how quickly we pick up speed. So thoughts on the route. There are a couple of bits of foliage like you just saw that come in the cab. Just a couple of the track joints need sorting out and the platform stopping areas need looking at. But this is work in progress. I would expect them all to be done by the time this is released and by God I'm looking forward to it. Well, I don't know. I'm quite happy with it. I've got it now. But I want you guys to be able to get your hands on this. So it's talking about these viaducts and cuttings and I mean, some blazy depots down the bottom as well. I don't think we've had some blazy depot in train sim yet. We might have done, and I've just not noticed. Here, look, look, look. Little bridges like that that you'd never really see, and there's one further down here that's awesome. It's like one of my favourite places to go is Trago Mills when I go to Cornwall. It is like. How can you describe Trago Mills? If you wanted anything, they've probably got it. I think the last time I walked out of there, I walked out with a couple of boat fenders, uh, a new razor. Oh, I didn't even really get to show that one off. Uh, a new razor. Um, the kids had some toys. I get a pair of wellies as well. I think me, me and the wife got some some new wellies each as well. So I mean, it just has everything. You can you can get basically anything there. 
gardening stuff, you name it, it's all there. And if you look up, I think this is the Liscaird one. I think it's the Liscaird one. When you come into that, you just look up and there's just this viaduct going over your head. And it's beautiful, stunning little bit of scenery. Stunning. Now going down this is alright. You should see coming up this is... Uh, you need to be good with that throw. I'm really looking forward to trying it out with an HST as well. Level crossing board. No flashy lights on this one, though. No. Gardens around here, though. Yes, <clears throat> you can see it from the track. It's detailed. It's got it. You're going past that at 10 mile an hour. It should be detailed. If you're going past it at 125 mile an hour, it doesn't matter, does it? You're not going to see it. I'm not going to go too ham on the power just because we've got uh, to get the token in a minute anyway. And this bit of this route is just beautiful. Going beside the canal. Stunning. And I'm not a massive fan of train sim water, you know I'm not, but uh, they've, they've made it work really nicely actually here. Great little bit, isn't it? That 
that's quite reminiscent of the coal line. So there's some blaze in front of us here. token, well panned it back should I say Big depot at one point, some blazes, really, wasn't it? I was actually watching a program about tops the other day, one of the British transport film ones, and that was a wagon going up from uh, Truro to. Okay, originally goes to Nottingham, and then he goes, no, actually, it needs to go to Stoke. In a way that only those British transport films can do. So Ash actually made the scenario and there uh, should be an HST at the end here so that there was another bit of AI in. But as we're running so late, I don't expect it to be there at all. And this is par. Beautiful. Really well done here. Really, really well done. Really impressed. So all in all, I am very keen for this route to be released. I hope you guys are too, because I think it just completely captures Cornwall in in one route. It's brilliant. Really, really impressed. So head on over, like their page, get this done. Give them all the support they need. That's high-speed tracks. Also get Devon Rails as well while you're there. Thank you very much to Simon, Ash and Callum who have given the opportunity to preview this guy for you guys. It's, it's a true honour for me. Very humbled. Once again, guys, thanks ever so much and I will catch you next time.